Hey everybody, Dave Madden here. I'm a musician in Austin, Texas, and your teachers at SSOA asked me to lead you through um, non-classical music history. So we're going to explore a lot of different styles right now, pop music and rock music dating back hundreds of years, kind of the DNA of how we got to current popular music. And Miss Lee told me that there's going to be a Spotify playlist that you can kind of follow along with that's going to um, have some of the songs that we're working with today and maybe some extra ones as well. So pop music um, for you students is the, the word pop is short for popular and popular music changes very rapidly. I mean every uh, five or ten or fifteen years popular music sounds very differently than it did just ten years ago. In that way it's a little bit different than classical music. With classical music we're still playing these same songs that are 50 years old, 150 years old, 300 years old. Well, chances are young people of a certain generation have one type of popular music, whereas the generation before, it could be a completely different style of popular music, and that's certainly true for today. We're going to start, though, in the distant past. We're going to go all the way back to kind of American Revolutionary War period uh, around the founding of America. Of course, these American colonists, they had a lot of influences coming from the European tradition. So early American popular music was heavily influenced by the European popular music of the time. You probably know this song. I thought we would start with um, Yankee Doodle. Yankee Doodle, we now think of as like a children's rhyme, but it was a popular song, right? So it was kind of the pop music of its day. It's from about 1775, and it was... Uh, intended to actually mock the colonists. The British soldiers would sing Yankee Doodle about the American colonists. They adopted it as their own tune. It's about a man who thinks that sticking a feather in his cap would make him distinguished and look more like a nobleman. The melody is likely from a Danish folk song from Europe, thought to date back even as far as the medieval times. So of course we all know this. It's still fun, uh, even now. So you can see how 250 years ago, people would hear that and go, I really like that. That's catchy. It would become popular. Next up, Francis Scott Key published The Star Spangled Banner. Not the song, but the poem. He wrote it, this long, beautiful poem inspired by the American flag, which would eventually become our national anthem, but not until 1931. You'd think that The Star Spangled Banner has always been our national anthem, but not so. It too is based on a European medley, uh, melody, this time British, and the song has a really big vocal range. You need to be able to sing low and high. It's very difficult to sing this song. Of course, this is the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> The, uh, the very large range, you have, this is the lowest note, and at the end of this song it goes, so you have um, an octave and a half, which is a pretty big range uh, vocally for a song like that. Okay, next up we have the Battle Hymn of the Republic, so we're skipping ahead from 1815 with the Star, the Star Spangled Banner all the way to the Civil War era. 1861 to 1865 thereabouts. Julia Ward Howe writes the poem, The Battle Hymn of the Republic, and sets it to music, and it becomes this very popular Civil War song. Uh, Julia, the author of the piece, she was an active leader in anti-slavery politics and a strong supporter of the Union. Here's a little bit of the Battle Hymn of the Republic, how this sounds. <laughs> Harmonically, what I mean by that is the chords that are used in the song. You can start to see some influences that are going towards what will eventually become jazz. Specifically this. That 
was a musical kind of vernacular a vocabulary that hadn't been used in earlier things like Yankee Doodle. That sound is eventually going to become very popular in jazz music, in ragtime, uh, in kind of 1930s Southern era, uh, Southern gospel uh, church hymns. And here we're starting to see it in the Civil War. Um, the most recognized song in the English language is Happy Birthday. We, it's so uh, ubiquitous. Everybody knows Happy Birthday. We, it just feels like it was always there. It just feels like something that was passed down from um, forever ago. But of course, it was written by an actual person. It was written actually by two people, by two sisters who were also both teachers, like Miss Lee. Uh, Patty and Mildred Hill, it was written in Kentucky, in the state of Kentucky. And it's the most recognized song in the English language. Do I really have to play it? It's a little waltz too, right? So even that would be considered popular music. I mean, it's the most popular, popular song maybe of all time in America and in um, Western English speaking countries. Okay, finally now we're gonna get to the early 1900s and the birth of jazz. Jazz is um, quite different than classical music. It actually does share a lot of similar DNA with, uh, with Western classical music that you are learning to play on your violin or, or viola. But it also kind of takes classical music and it goes into some really complicated and complex places, again, harmonically with the chords. It also dramatically changes the rhythm um, where the, the accents of beats are placed. It changes all that. Uh, jazz is based on Mississippi River riverboat music that would be played on these riverboats going up and down the big Mississippi River that kind of bisects our country. And it's uh, from black music as well as French and Spanish piano music. Jazz originally develops along the Mississippi River and mostly in the town of New Orleans, the city of New Orleans, which is this port city at the mouth of the Mississippi that's very important. In fact, ports all around the world for all of human history have tended to be these breeding grounds for new uh, genres of music. Makes sense, right? You have people coming to trade into a port city. You have people traveling from different distant uh, lands. They're meeting each other. They're saying, this is my style of music. Well, this is my style of music. They start jamming together, right? And they come up with something new. The same could be said about classical music too. Hundreds of years ago in Europe, somebody from Denmark would come visit somewhere somebody from Austria, and they would come up with kind of a hybrid style of music. Jazz is very much like that. So I don't know if you students have heard a lot of jazz. It tends to have this, what we call a walking bass line, because it walks along. Doesn't it kind of sound like somebody walking? So jazz kind of sounds like this. jazz progression, we call it, which is a way to say uh, a series of chords all in a row that we're kind of used to hearing like that. That particular tune is called Fly Me to the Moon, made popular by um, an old singer named Frank Sinatra. Look him up. He's very good. Um, maybe Miss Lee can put some of that into the Spotify playlist. Old Blue Eyes. That guy had a voice. Students, think of it this way. That guy's voice was so good, they simply called him The Voice. Must be pretty good at singing for somebody to just call you the voice. Um, next up, we're going to move past that to ragtime. I would say ragtime and jazz are closely related, kind of developing at the same time. Maybe even ragtime developed a little earlier than jazz. So the most famous ragtime composer would have been Scott Joplin. This guy was a brilliant pianist, a very aggressive 
almost athletic style of playing the piano, right? This is not touching the keys very lightly. It's um, kind of a violent musical style. You would play this, you would get sweaty, you'd get worked up, burn a bunch of calories. So here's a little bit of a very famous ragtime song called The Maple Leaf Rag by Scott Joplin. <laughs> dynamic, right? Really fast and aggressive. And uh, that's called ragtime music. It was around the year 1911 or so. That takes us into the whole world of musicals. Broadway musicals, these would have developed um, in New York City. And musicals, as you, you know, you know a lot of musicals. If you know Disney movies, right? If you know uh, Frozen or older ones, The Little Mermaid. All those things came out of this musical tradition where you would have characters, you'd have acting, you'd have dialogue, you'd have uh, dancing, and you'd have these big uh, show showy numbers of of music. So Showboat, uh, a song called Showboat, or a musical called Showboat, was the first like kind of hugely popular musical. It combined all those things, music, dialogue, dancing, and as the Great Depression neared, musicals provided people with entertainment that would help them escape from the hard times that they were living through. Sometimes life can be hard. You want to escape into music. Maybe sometimes you feel that way. You want to play your, your violin if things aren't going so well in the rest of your life. I do that too, except with the piano. I don't know how to play the violin. I wish I did. And I'm glad that you guys are starting, starting young. Um, Speaking of instruments, let's get to the electric guitar. What does that mean? What is the electric guitar, right? It's not that you take a normal guitar and plug it into a wall outlet like it's electrical. What it means is actually that there's a microphone, a kind of a microphone inside the guitar that amplifies the sound and makes it louder, okay? That was, a, that was important to jazz guitar players because you had these jazz guitar players They'd be playing with this big band, uh, really loud drums, loud brass instruments like trumpet and trombone, wind instruments like saxophones, a guy uh, at the piano. Pianos are, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty loud. And then this guitar player, well, no one could hear him play the guitar or her play the guitar over how loud that big band was. So they needed to amplify that sound and make the guitar louder. They did that with the power and the miracle of electricity, hence the electric guitar. That would eventually go on to change music history, popular music history, and help give birth to rock and roll, the electric guitar, such an iconic sound. Elvis Presley. I'm sure Miss Lee will include some Elvis Presley on the Spotify playlist, but also I encourage you um, students, if you've never seen Elvis Presley perform, Go look up some videos of him on YouTube or wherever because he's this amazing performer. In 1955, he became the first rock star, the very first one. Elvis is the best-selling solo, best solo musical artist of all time to this day. He became popular with fans after television appearances and went on to release many successful records and star in many popular Hollywood-style films. He's still known as the king of rock and roll. Later, we're going to get to Michael Jackson, who's the king of pop, but still the king of rock and roll is Elvis Presley from going on almost, you know, we're coming up on a hundred years ago. A little bit of Elvis. He had this popular tune called You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog. It kind of went like this. You ain't nothing but a hound dog, crying all the time. rock and roll for you. Moving on now to Motown. Barry Gordy Jr., a man named Barry Gordy Jr., it's a funny name, isn't it? Founds Motown Record Company. Barry began his career in music by opening a record store to expose people to jazz music, and he loved going to nightclubs to hear new artists singing. 
He, he had this great ear, this ability to spot something cool, something that's upcoming for the next big thing. And his record company signed lots of very successful artists. The Motown sound is kind of like, uh, it's like... <laughs> something like that or uh <laughs> you know um I know you're gonna leave me but I refuse to let you go they were kind of I, I would say they're mostly positive upbeat songs happy songs songs that people would like to listen to that would like to dance to that would get you kind of tapping your toe and enjoying the music very popular genre when I say that word genre, that kind of refers to a whole family of music, the genre of Motown, the genre of jazz music, the genre of ragtime music, uh, G-E-N-R-E, -E, great uh, vocab word for you. Country music, let's move on to that. Patsy Cline became a very uh, mainstream pop music hit in her own right. She started her career with the Grand Old Opry, a famous stage in Nashville, Tennessee, and she had a bunch of hits, including this one. Crazy, crazy for feeling so lonely. I'm crazy for crying, crazy for lying. country ballad song, the genre of country. On to the British invasion. Uh, the British invasion. What does that mean? It's not like a battle, not a war kind of an invasion. It's an invasion of culture and music. They call it the British invasion. So that's England, Britain, over in Europe, invaded America with their cool music. Uh, Americans loved what was going on over there. We just couldn't get enough of it. And one of the biggest bands ever in all of rock and roll history, The Beatles, they came over, they played on this TV show, and everybody lost their minds. They had never heard anything like this before. So here's a little bit of some early Beatles called I Wanna Hold Your Hand. Well, I'll tell you something their minds. They had never heard anything like that before. On to the first major music festival. This is 1969 Woodstock. If you don't know about Woodstock yet, you will learn about it. The Woodstock Music and Art Fair featuring such artists as Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, The Who. The Who? Yes, that's their name. The Who. The Who? Yeah, The Who. Um, and it's attended by like hundreds of thousands of people, which they weren't really prepared for. They didn't know so many people were going to show up in a big field. Now you're used to seeing this, right? You've heard of Austin City Limits uh, Music Festival. Well, the first one, the first really big one was Woodstock. So Janis Joplin, who has roots in Texas, actually, has this song. <laughs> that out on the Spotify playlist. Make sure that you take a listen to Janis Joplin's amazing, uh, tortured, scruffy voice full of angst and passion. And that brings us up through till the 70s. Now some of these, uh, some of these genres, I'm not really going to be able to play on the piano because there's just no way to capture them, such as punk. Punk rock, 19, like kind of mid-70s in New York City. It was born there. Really, really aggressive. This is like a the hair, like the mohawk hairstyle. Um, guys with guys and girls with tattoos and chains and ear piercings and leather jackets came up with punk rock. After that, disco, which by the way there was kind of a battle between 
punk rock and disco, which one was better, which one people liked, which one people didn't like, kind of divided people into two different camps. But disco, I thought I'd play a little bit of the famous song, I Will Survive. Disco's got this, uh, this feel to it. want to tie that back to jazz really quick because that chord progression the chords here these are the same chords from the jazz song earlier from fly me to the moon and let me gaze among the stars i don't want to make too much extra work for your teachers but you could tell your students about the circle of fifths or maybe they already know about the circle of fifths but this is that. That's the whole chord progression is a uh, circle of fifths. And then after that, hip hop. Um, hip hop, right, is a blend of rock, jazz, and soul with African drumming and percussive vocals. It was born in the South Bronx, also in New York City, where creative young musicians developed this style at block parties in their neighborhoods, just people hanging out, trying to make some, some new cool music, house parties. This is the advent of the DJ, the whole DJ thing. DJ, every, every DJ you've ever liked started here in the Bronx with hip hop. Then in 1985, Michael Jackson releases Thriller, the best selling album of all time. I'm sure that Lee's gonna put, Miss Lee's gonna put Thriller on your Spotify playlist. Uh, Michael Jackson becomes the king of pop. His style was a combination of many genres that came before him, including pop, dance, and soul, and I would throw a lot of Motown in there. In fact, the Jackson 5, his family started as a Motown uh, band. He's believed to have paved the way for modern pop music as we know it today. That's absolutely true. And his, his main producer is a guy named Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones dates all the way back to working with the jazz guys like Duke Ellington, so it's a lineage. It's all connected. This whole family tree, it's a family tree of music. These things don't happen um, on their own. They come from the thing that came before it. So a little Michael Jackson uh, that I can play is Billie Jean. After that, moving on to the early 1990s, finally, we're getting to a time when I was alive. Um, grunge, the grunge rock scene rises in Seattle, Seattle, Washington, and up in the northwest part of the country, and featuring such bands as Nirvana and Pearl Jam. These bands were inspired by the punk thing that had happened a decade or more before in New York City, and many groups started in their garages. So if you've ever heard the term garage band, well, the grunge scene was a lot of that. Just people getting together wherever they could. Where did they have space and where could they make a lot of noise together? In the garage right? Can't do it in the kitchen. Um, maybe you can't do it outside. So you, you do it in the garage, make a mess in there. The name grunge comes from the dirty sound that these bands produced because they didn't have enough money for fancy sound equipment that would make them sound like Michael Jackson. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this journey through 200 years of popular music history, and I hope that it's inspired you to check out some or all of these genres. There's a lot of great music out there. Check it out, y'all, check it out. Um, your teachers have put together this fabulous Spotify playlist, so take a listen to that. Educate yourself about all the other kinds of music, the pop, the rock and roll, the non-classical music. Check out that Spotify playlist. Again, my name is Dave Madden. Really happy to be with you guys here today. Thanks for having me, bye-bye.